My, my aim was to try and well, attempt to break the Guinness World Record for fastest female to hand cycle Land's End Jenna Groats. So that's what I've been doing this last week. But yeah, it didn't spill. That's good. <laughs> good setup. Okay, perfect. So, first question before we get into it, how are you feeling? Has it all sank in? It's weird. It's really weird. Um, I'm feeling better. Like it's now a week on since I finished, and it, it, physically I'm feeling better. Um, I expected it to batter me about a bit, which obviously it did. Um, but yeah, not probably as bad as I thought, which is good. Um, I think mentally, yeah, it's weird. I I didn't finish think about the finish until the finish, or just before the finish, and you kind of plan in your head how it's going to go, how you're going to feel. Um, you know the champagne popping or the rest of it. Of course, it's none of that, particularly because it was three o'clock in the morning, <laughs> and and I don't really know almost how I feel. Um, I can't. I just rode my bike every day as I do every day yeah, um, around Britain because I love Great Britain and I love riding my bike. Um, and the fact that I've ridden from the furthest south to the furthest north, um, I don't. I don't know if I really see it. Yeah. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah, I can imagine. Did you kind of always know you were gonna? You're going to manage the ride, you just didn't know time yeah. frame. Like every day I ride a bike, that's what I did. I just rode from A to B instead of A to A, which is what I normally do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just no coming back this time. <laughs> okay, um, so going way back to before the ride, um, when did you decide to go for this? Um, did anything in particular draw you towards the John O'Groats Land's End ride? Yeah, I've, de- I've been thinking about um, this particular journey for years, I think. Um, so when I was in hospital with my last stroke, like 11 years ago, um, I had obviously a lot of time in hospital and I was kind of planning adventures in my head, you know, just lying in that bed on the ward looking at those four walls. So there was always the adventure planning going on there. Um, and, and not particularly a jog at the time, but it was about travelling um, human powered through Great Britain, through maybe Scotland, the islands or something. So I think that kind of was like the original spark. And then obviously getting into performance sport through the years. Um, and then with last year when I sort of went on my first proper um, big adventure, I suppose, when I went to the Faroe Islands. Um, that was kind of the start of that side of things and the Faroe Islands were actually the perfect warm-up for this as well. <laughs> the, the Faroe Islands, it rains every day. Great Britain, it rained every day. <laughs> yeah, it's not much so, uh, <laughs> No, it was perfect and out there I was on my own and it was you know, self-supported and I had to just look after myself, find my food, find my shelter um, and it, I think it probably toughened me up. Um, it was great. And um, so from, from the Faroe Islands, I was already thinking about what I was going to do next. And it was sort of nine months in the planning to, to do Land Edge and Drona Groats. So to bring the adventure back to the UK, back to Great Britain, um, but to bring the performance side into that. So obviously I'm a performance athlete, uh, yeah. Paralympian. So for me, that's, that's a big part of me. But adventure is a massive part of me as well. So I wanted to try and combine the two yeah, to yeah. bring those performance targets, um, the race mind into adventure. And you know, I, race, I, I represent Great Britain in my sport, um, so what better to explore Great Britain on my yeah, bike? Yeah, exactly. Nice to have a competitive edge kind of to, a, Definitely, to yeah. an adventure rather yeah. than just a big jolly holiday. Yeah, yeah. It'll give you a bit of focus. Um, so in terms of training leading up to the, to the ride, mm. did you do anything specific for this event or is it kind of just on top of what you're doing anyway? I w- my normal training, I was training uh, for marathons anyway in my racing wheelchair, so marathons obviously were always my biggest distance, um, but then training for a 26.2 mile race versus 100 miles under our plus a day was quite different. Um, so I was, I was conscious of getting the miles in, um, getting the big miles on the bike, but also I had to keep that, um, the speed and the intervals and the sharpness in for racing, but also because I've been advised that you know, to do these big journeys, yes, you want, obviously you need to be fit and have the endurance, but having that, that kick when you need it, you know, when you're struggling or whether you're facing a headwind or whether you're facing another hill or something, you kind of need that extra spark. So um, that was good to keep that in, and, and I enjoy that sort of stuff anyway, so yeah, yeah. sort of racing you know a couple of weeks before before i started on um one mile around london was a bit crazy and then going to 100 mile yeah, but i think it really stuff. helped to be honest i think it helped kind of um keep my mind in a good place i suppose kind of mix it up a bit yeah that was quite good so mostly on the bike obviously endurance but also a lot of it um i tried to make myself suffer i knew i'd, yeah. I'd have to suffer and i knew i'd be in bad places so um I'd go out in all the weathers, I'd make sure I got soaked, I was cold, I was hungry, um, I was empty, um, yeah. I didn't have much sleep. In negative situations. <laughs> yeah, definitely, yeah, because you, you know, you, you're going to face it and yeah. you've got to get through it, you've got to yeah. get through it. So if you've, if you've already done that, you kind of know what you need to pull on to, to get through those tough times. Yeah. So I think that was really helpful. Yeah, because I, I think it's quite easy to train for 
the good situations mm. when it's semi and totally. say I can smash out these miles quite easily yeah. but you kind of it's hard to put yourself in the, yeah. the negative situations. Yeah, you can go out on a nice day and have ice cream every stop, can't you? But, yeah, yeah, exactly. you know, and just take photos and take Coffee your time. Sundays. But it's not yeah, about yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> so during those kind of bad stages, is there anything that you draw on to kind of push you through? Um, I did a bit of sports psych uh, before, I, before I went, so that was really helpful. Um, I've always kind of... Um, I do try and follow sort of meditation and mindfulness and that kind of thing, and yeah. I think that's always been really useful through sport and, and through whatever situation I'm in um, so I've always used that sort of side but with the sports psych there was definitely there was the self-talk but there was also the you know were you okay you're telling yourself that but what's your body telling you yeah. so before this challenge I was super super stressed and um, anxiety was like through the roof because it's just so much you know I've built this from nothing and um, it's the first time I've built a project really and certainly on this scale it's the first time I've built a team because it's yeah. always just been me on my own going off adventuring or whatever yeah. or I've been part of a team that I am I suppose the athlete that the team tells you what to do, whereas yeah. this time I'm like, well, who's going to be on my team? What do I need? How do I build this? How do I get sponsors? Blah, blah. More of a so management it was role massive. rather than a... Yeah. yeah, yeah. So definitely sort of stress and stuff. And so I think going into it, I was, although my head was saying, or my, I was telling my head, you know, oh, you know, you're strong, you're focused and all that. My body was kind of shoulders up tight and, and just not breathing properly. So it's important that you kind of put your body in the right place as well. Yeah. So that was a good combination of doing that sort of stuff. Um, also, I found I had a playlist that I, that I put together and I asked yeah. people to add to. So I had an okay. eclectic mix of tunes. So yeah. when I really needed to, and when it, I had an outrider behind me, um, obviously they weren't allowed beside me or in front of me. So sometimes you could have a bit of a chat behind, but sometimes I had to get in my own head. So when the rain's throwing it down again and the headwind's battering you and the road's really slow and you know it's going to take hours to get to the next point, then I just put sort of one of my earphones through my um, the helmet. Um, and, and put on some tunes and it was anything like from The Lion King to yeah. um, The Great Showman and I just sing as my voice and probably not so uh, grateful for the um, for the Outrider but it helped me just to yeah. like carry <laughs> out there and get through it. Oh, <laughs> poor people you passed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no stuff like that is obviously it's crucial. I think yeah. just when you go to the gym just having something to kind of get lost in those miles. It was exactly that, one. exactly, yeah. yeah. And there was, there was also times, particularly the last day, that I found that I almost got more and more distant from the team um, because we were on this journey together but I, this, they were on it for seven days or less than seven days yeah. I've been on it for a very long time and it meant it's so much bigger you know it's a bigger mountain than just that seven days yeah. um, and I just found that although it was great everyone was so, so excited about potentially finishing um, I kind of had to take my, myself away a little bit and just get in my own head and think about what it meant and who it involved and certain people that weren't, were no longer here and I talk about it I get really emotional <laughs> so I can't stop crying <laughs> um, and, and yeah that was really important for me and really special I kind of had to do that just to sort of separate a bit and go do you know what I just need some time to process yeah. it all a little bit. Did you find it at all difficult managing people for kind of the first time? Did you ever have to yeah. put your foot down and put yourself forward? It, I mean the guys are amazing um, it's not easy for anybody no the team came together for the night before for the first time so most people didn't know each other um, Nobody had ever been out with me cycling. They didn't know how I was on the bike. Yeah. Uh, they just didn't know how to work with each other. Um, there was me and then one other from the performance background. Um, obviously, uh, people from the outdoors uh, adventure background, but it's, it's very different. And even from the performance background, um, my physio, you know, she's used to working from a track, um, not on the road in a, a very small van with everybody else, with all weathers, with tents, with, with having to do all that sort of stuff. So it was, it was definitely, you know, it, was, it was hard for everybody. Um, I definitely could have, if I had the time, could have planned a bit more, but you, yeah. you go with what you've got, you know, yeah, yeah. you kind of get to the point and you, you go, we've just got to work this out. Yeah. yeah, and we did, and everyone pulled together amazingly, and yeah. you know, each day we got better, we got slicker with the timings for breaks and the food and yeah. jobs that needed to be done and Garmin charging and lights you, and all the rest of it. You found you got better throughout the experience? Yeah, definitely, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I'm just going <laughs> to check. <laughs> Also, I forget what you ask me sometimes. <laughs> you might need to remind me if I haven't asked I forget it. what I yeah. ask. <laughs> right, perfect. So, let's talk about nutrition and how important nutrition was on the run-up mm. and during the, uh, during the ride. And did you struggle at all with nutrition and mm. eating? Because I can imagine it's a bit of a... Yeah. I, I can't even eat in the morning of like a, yeah. any race or any competitive. Not, no. I just can't do it's it. Hard, so. it? it is hard. Um, 
In the lead up, I, well, yeah, to be fair, I think normally, you know, as an athlete, then I know what I have to do for nutrition, I know what I have to do for training, um, I know how to do the recovery side, and I was trying to do as much as that of that that I normally would, but I had to be the athlete, but I also had to be project manager, sponsorship manager, blah, blah, blah everything, um, so things weren't done as well as I'd have liked to, but it's just, you've got to just do what you've got in the time, um, so I probably wasn't eating as well as I should have done on the lead up to it, and um, there was a lot of sort of we wanted to try different foods or different ways of eating but it wasn't that practical so um, I just knew I had to get enough calories in so I was sort of burning at least like 6,000 calories a day um, so it's getting the food in and getting the right kind of foods and getting the carbs getting the protein yeah. um, and I think I just found it in the morning I tried to have um, so we were up at just before four every morning so try and have something small to eat before I do my first block on the bike yeah. and I started off doing okay um, and then as the days went on I just got sicker and sicker and I just couldn't face food in the morning then no. so then we worked out that um, during that first block if after about a couple of hours I'd get a bit of an appetite so I'd have some like dry fruit bread or something and that's yeah. to help and then once we stopped for the breakfast stop, um, which is about three hours later, then I was really hungry and I'd like wolf down some Smashing amazing porridge and <laughs> yeah, the, the, the team made, which was awesome. Um, but it was, it was, I should have eaten more, definitely. Yeah. Um, I lost about five kilos in a week, so <laughs> it's pretty good. I suppose you're going to expect good. that. <laughs> yeah, you expect it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm sure. Super you wouldn't want to come biscuits. back faster, would you? <laughs> The amount of food we had, there was a worry that was going to happen. Yeah. They were going to have to roll me back. <laughs> help, help up the hills. <laughs> yeah. Mel can't get up the hill. Yeah. She's eating too many biscuits. <laughs> um, and it was nice because I could eat, you know, when I wanted chips, I ate chips. When I wanted a cake, I ate cake. And yeah, that was yeah. good. But eating on the bike was quite hard because obviously yeah. I'm using my hands all the time. Yeah. So, um, and I'm on the main road. So there's, you've got to pick your times when you can eat. And it's kind of like grab something. The outrider car does a flyby and I grab a bit of bread or whatever it is. Yeah. Uh, and then just shove it in my mouth and just try and eat it anywhere. Yeah, I can, kind so of thing. I didn't really, because when you're normally cycling. Yeah, you can have you, your hands free. You can have your hands free, yeah. but yeah. Yeah, That's an issue I didn't think about. Really. Yeah. <laughs> so there was yeah some interesting U- unique techniques. issues. <laughs> yeah. Big straws and yeah, yeah I can imagine. Yeah, I kind of managed to get my um, my drinks bottle past that, and I could hold it in my teeth and like throw my head back like some kind of seal or something, just yeah. trying to get it in me. <laughs> Small for down. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Yeah, and then yeah, just try and get as much food in the breaks um, and at the end of the day. But the end of the day was there was so much to do and just need to sleep. So I think the middle of the day and breakfast was probably the best time to to eat. Yeah. Um, but yeah, what I did have was was great. Work well, yeah, obviously. <laughs> um, so finally, before we get into the actual ride, um, let's have a quick talk about your support team mm-hmm. and their roles and, and who they are, and just give them a wee shout out. Yeah, they cool. Work pretty hard. Yeah, so yeah, my team were amazing. Um, there were six sort of uh, core team, I suppose, including me, and then we had the film crew as well. Um, so we had um, Katie was looking after. She did. She cooked my eggs, my, my porridge, and the amazing food. But also she looked after my social media. So she like was telling everybody where we were going, what we were doing. Uh, she was fantastic, and she gave the best hugs. So that was yeah, awesome to Good have her. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, and Paula was the physio, so um, she was basically keeping my body together to keep me on the road. So she she do an acupuncture. Um, taping me up every day, um, I had a lot of issues with my skin, um, mainly to start with because of basically like saddle sores, so obviously yeah. I'm using my arms, it was pouring rain all the time, so under my arms um, I had just sores and blisters and disgustingness, um, yeah really vibe because of the wet so it was just chafing and yeah. so that was kind of being dressed and, and sorted out. Um, my arms, my elbows, um, anything that was kind of struggling, then then she'd sort of take that together and, yeah. and keep me together. Um, no, doing treatment, yeah, on the side of the road, on the side of the sort of the A roads, uh, anything you kind of needed to do. So that was really great to, to, to keep me going. But amazingly, my kind of, I was worried about my shoulders because obviously you know, it's all on the upper body, it's yeah. all on the shoulders. But as the, the yeah. journey went on. They felt like they got stronger, which was good. Yeah, they got used to the pain. I think so, yeah. yeah. And actually, it was off the bike that things hurt. When I was on the bike, it was, it was all right. Just, just dreaded coming off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah keep turning yeah. the cranks. Um, and then we had so my mechanic, uh, Stephen, was amazing. Um, I, Steve and I didn't know each other before. We'd met each other probably about two weeks before the challenge. I've been recommended him, and he was just brilliant. He he looked after my bike amazingly. Um, he kind of heard every little tweak and squeak and everything which I didn't notice so he's like oh something's rubbing or something's this and he'd be sorting it out um, and also he was one of my outriders so um <laughs> so <laughs> ignore that <laughs> nothing to see here yeah. informal as it gets <laughs> 
So yeah, he'd he'd sit behind me and he'd ride with me. So he alternated. So he'd do a you know hundred plus mile day um, and then drive the support car behind just as a safety car as well. So yeah, he was absolutely brilliant. And then we had um, Howl as well, who was also a support rider. So and, and driving the car. So he was also my photographer. Yeah. So he took some amazing images um, behind the scenes and on the road as well. Yeah. So he'd ride with the alternate days and then drive the safety car the other days. Um, and then we have Matt, Matt, Matt Nav. <laughs> Matt Nav, um, what else was he? Um, uh, washing man, um, he'd get, <laughs> um, laundry man, yeah, he, he'd, he'd be drying my clothes in the van. Um, I, I went through about three sets of cycling clothes every day for the first few days because it was just horrible <laughs> weather. Yeah. So as soon as I got in, Katie was stripping my clothes off me, um, Matt was hanging them up, the heaters full on, drying everything. He, every night he looked after my route, so he knew, he plotted out the next day. He went through with me where, what I had to go, where I was going, any points that I might need to know about. Yeah. Um, he made sure like the garments were charged, the lights were charged, uh, sorted all the van out with the guys. Um, and then when I was getting off the bike, he was always there. You have, for the Guinness World Record, you have to have all this evidence. So uh, every stop and start, you have to document, you have to video it. Yeah. But then you also have to have the time and the date in it. But in a, but not on the video, if that makes sense. So he's there holding his watch, holding uh, my crutches yeah. ready to give me, yeah. videoing it, me coming in. So every time he was there waiting for me. Yeah. Um, and then when I sort of struggled to get off the bike, he's hauling me off the bike. So yeah, he was he was awesome. He was on it. Yeah, he was. And then of course we had the film crew. So we had uh, three in total, um, two at any time that um, followed us the entire way, but also just got completely just got in with us, you know, um, helped out, did some washing up, <laughs> uh, did whatever they needed to do and they were abs uh, yeah, amazing and um, so great to, to have them on board and document uh, what went on this last week. Any indication when that's going to come out? Uh, I don't know for sure when yet, I know they're editing at the moment, they've got a lot, a lot of footage, uh, a lot to work through, um, got some ideas of, yeah, we're going to sort of hopefully travel with it and okay. take it on the road, which would be great and do some screenings and some talks and stuff so that's quite exciting perfect look forward to seeing that and of course you know we had the team on the road and then there was you know the, the back people so obviously sponsors yourselves yeah, yeah. Um, and then also i was working with um, my university so doing some science stuff some sort science so they're kind of working in the background with that yeah. kind of stuff and yeah look you know there's always a bigger team to it definitely and everyone, everyone did it really yeah, it's a great cause we're really happy to be part of it thank you so <laughs> onto the ride itself mm. Talk us through it, the highs, like the lows, things you didn't expect, just all the interesting stuff really. It's quite a blur still. Um, it, it definitely reminds me of my drinking days when yeah. <laughs> like slowly start things start to come back yeah. and that's kind of happening at the minute. Uh, the sort of 24 hours Good things, following, I hope, not, good things. not yeah. like my drinking day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> we won't talk about those. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah kind of uh, the last, I think the 24 hours after we finished, that's still quite a blank. Um, People are kind of saying, oh, do you remember this conversation or that? No, <laughs> no any of that. Just, just glaze. <laughs> yeah. And I think I thought at the end that I was quite with it, but clearly I wasn't after no. what I'm remembering now. <laughs> um, yeah, so the ride, where do you start? So obviously before I was, I was super excited, but I was really nervous. Um, I'd set a goal of nine days. The world record stood at 10 days and eight hours. Um, and I'd set nine days. Um, I kind of start questioning myself, like, where did I get these nine days from? And then start thinking, if I literally just plucked it out of the air? Because no, because it was one no less one. than the... <laughs> it was less, else. exactly. That was basically it. Well, it's less than ten. Yeah. <laughs> so you need to beat it by a minute, don't you? So <laughs> yeah. squeeze her in. Well, I was talking to Mark Beaumont. Um, I blame him for a lot of my um, adventure decisions. And um, you know, he was like, well, you can do 100 miles in a day, can't you? And I was like, yeah, of course I can. So then in my head, I'm like, well, if I can do 100 miles in a day, I could do 100 miles every day. Yeah. But obviously I never have. I've never done um, two days even of, of over 100 miles because it's just, it hasn't happened. You know, it's not practical to train like that. Yeah, um, it would have been great to go out on these multi, you know, multi days, 100 mile days yeah, rides. Yeah, like a dry run sort of thing. Yeah, but, but when you're on your own, you know, with a handbike and having to have crutches or whatever mm -hmm. else, you, it's not possible. <laughs> Um, and time, you know, when you're trying to build these things and then just work and everything else, um, yeah, you just can't be doing that. So I, I did big miles, but I didn't do day after day after day. So I knew I could do day one. Um, I didn't know. I thought I could do day two, but I didn't know. And then, yeah. Um, so nine days, um, a fellow hand cyclist, a very good hand cyclist friend of mine, um, said that um, basically I was crazy to think to do 100, over 100 miles a day. And I was like, great, <laughs> if yeah, he thinks it's good, that. Good indicator. I think he used the word insane. Mm. <laughs> um, 
which filled me with lots of confidence, but yeah. I thought, well, we'll give it a go. Yeah. So, yeah, first day, obviously really, really nervous. I didn't sleep at all the night before. Um, my body was just was not restful. I was having palpitations. I was twitching. I just needed to get going. I just needed yeah. to get on the bike. I think my rest and heart rate was over 100 before I'd even sort of got out of the van. Yeah. <laughs> we got to Land's End, and it was, we were planning to start just after four, um, but it was pitch black for a long time. It was raining. Um, it was windy. And it just wasn't going light. Yeah. So we waited till about 10 to 5, um, eventually set off them. And as soon as I, I started on my bike, my heart rate just shot through the roof. It was like, you know, maximum. Yeah. Um, but I just wanted to get going. Yeah. So full waterproofs, um, headed off. It was so dark that I can't remember going through the first sort of few lanes. And I had a um, helmet with a visor, a clear visor. But I could see the road went somewhere, but I had no. I couldn't see where it went. It was that dark. Yeah. <laughs> it was proper bonkers. And the, the crew that were in the support car behind me they say they'd never ridden with me before um, and I hear now that uh, they they let me go and then they came after me and they couldn't find me so they thought I'd gone the wrong way and um, they thought there's no way I could possibly be any further ahead so they went down another lane to try and look for me and nice. eventually found me and realized that I'd just gone yeah. <laughs> most mode. just kept going yeah uh, so it kind of once I was once I was on the bike um everything just sort of fell into place and things settled down and I was in my happy place and I just kept turning um, and I got that first block done, had the breakfast, went out again, and I just got into a bit of a, a routine. I planned to do either 50 kilometres blocks or four hours, um, hoping that 50 kilometres wouldn't come first, but I thought maybe particularly Devon and Cornwall with the really the, the biggest climbing, that it might take a lot longer. Yeah. But from, from like the first block, I think I did, I think I got to 45 kilometres and I felt good, and I said, oh, we're pushing to 60. And I think I did 60 kilometres within three hours or something, so that was good. So yeah. I thought, well, this is a, a good start. We'll do another 60 kilometre block. Um, and as the days went on, those kind of blocks just came more easy, I suppose, more natural, so I could push the distances out. And as long as I didn't have any stops, sometimes I'd stop for interviews or um, the weather sometimes we had to have another change of clothes or something, so it kind of broke up a little bit. Um, sometimes when we had to camp a bit further away, it took a bit longer to get to the start, so that yeah. would delay things a little bit. Um, but generally, yeah, my first block of the day was almost, I treated it like the warm-up, you know, because I was yeah. having a proper breakfast once I stopped. So for that three hours, I could just switch off, you just turn the cranks, and... yeah, and just use it as a warm-up. Yeah. And then the, the second block, I always tried to have the main block, so I'd try and do a good 80 kilometres in that one. So that was like my main training ride, I suppose, of the day. Um, get the most done I could, have a good lunch. So morning breakfast was a, a, between 45 minutes and an hour, lunch was the same, and then that last um, set was uh, whatever I had left really, um, which <laughs> if, if it was down to me I would have just kept going, but there was a point that you know that everyone needed to get back to the campsite and eat yeah. and get some sleep. Yeah. Um, so there was definitely, you know, the, the nights when the sun actually came out and, and it was dry and I could have just kept cycling, yeah. just, I so wanted to. Um, my support rider, whoever it was at the time as well, they kind of were enchanted by that and they were like, let's just keep riding. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'd love to, but <laughs> we need to sleep. <laughs> Damaging the next day when you have no idea where you are. Or... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it, was, it was always, I say I never thought about the finish, it was always about that moment and that block. So even, I didn't even think about that the whole day, so it was never about riding 100 miles, it yeah. was about riding that set. I broke it all down into... I think it started off with 25 sets for the entire ride. Yeah. I thought I would do, I did, ended up doing less, but that was kind of where I got. So I thought, well, every one I could knock off. So when I was down to like 20 and then 20, and then 19, and then 18, and it kind of helped manage it all. Yeah. But I just think about that set rather than the day the or day. the yeah. end or, yeah. Um, yeah, so at the, the end of the day, I always tended to feel a lot better than the beginning. Um, I think that's kind of how I race anyway, and that yeah. I take a while to get going, and then I just can keep going and keep going. Yeah. Um, and that was true as you know into the last day and uh, I always I, I, every day I tried to chip off a bit more than 100 miles and I did that in training as well because um, psychologically in training you know I knew I could ride 100 miles but I always tried to push over it because it's like you, you don't want that mental block to say 100 miles is the end kind of thing no, no. and I made a point of saying you know, to the team that we're not riding 200 miles we're riding to the record so there's not a limit there's just how far I can ride yeah, yeah. Um, so every day I'd try and chip off a little bit extra because I thought, well, if I need it, if, if I need a buffer, if there's an issue, for whatever it might be, yeah, yeah. then I've got a bit of a safety net. And then equally, safety net as exactly, well. yeah. yeah. And then equally, if I, um, I, I hoped that I could knock off maybe the bit at the end, um, that yeah. was always going to be the plan. So if I if I got to a point and there was you know less than 100 miles to go to the finish, there was nowhere I was going to stop. No. Did you get to enjoy any places that you hadn't been to or anything, or was it purely just? 
saw it had it in road sort of thing or bit of both I think. Um I was sad, sad to kind of whiz through play I love Cornwall. I love all, so many places in Great Britain and to, to get there and to whiz through so quickly and um the the people, the like communities, the support on the road, the people are messaging saying come and have some cake on us, come and have with some drinks. Yeah. That would have been lovely to stop off, you know, and do all that, but of course it was a race. It took me weeks. <laughs> still weeks. be out there now, which would have been nice. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, so in a way it was sad to sort of whiz through these places so quickly, but at the same time, I'm still on a bike, I'm not in a car, and, you know, I saw the different landscapes change as you go from yeah. county to county, and it amazed me how, you know, I could, I think the one day, I think I was in Cannock at the end of the day, and I was like, I was in Cornwall yesterday morning, how yeah. weird is that, you know, yeah, and yeah. it takes me sometimes six hours to get up the M6 or something, yeah. not very far. Well, it's so, a hand cycle it. Yeah, yeah. A hand cycle it. So you can see the landscape changing, and I saw things like, um, even just on the main roads, I was obviously going on the, on the A roads, they were really busy, but on the side you've got the verges and you've got these sort of little wild places that you'd never see in the car, and there yeah. were beautiful wildflowers and grasses and the smells, and it was really cool that you'd I never even would have thought about. So I did I definitely appreciated that. Yeah. And obviously getting into like Cumbria um, with the, the amazing, the lakes, uh, the, mount, uh, the, the hills and stuff around, and then Scotland with the big forests. And, but even in going through some of the cities, uh, I think it was Warrington that we were heading into. Um, and it was always, you know, that cities are going to be difficult to navigate. Let's just yeah. get, get in there, get out kind of thing. But I remember coming into Warrington over a bridge and looking to my left and there was about three bridges further left and looking to my right and there was three bridges and everyone was different um, and just the, the architecture, the kind of, it was, yeah, it was really, really cool and I wouldn't have expected that at all because yeah, yeah. everywhere was different and had its own little bit of magic. Quite nice to be able to kind of take your mind off it as well. Yeah, you? yeah. I actually enjoy it rather than just eyes shut blind. Yeah. That's good. It was very much about being in the moment so although sometimes I was away in my head, it was appreciate where you are now and some of the some of the tough times in Scotland um, when the roads were just just sort of big, uh, not very good surface, um, so they were slow. And I, just, I had to sort of out loud say to myself, you know, appreciate where you are, look around you, and how often do you get to do that? Yeah, yeah. I hate to ask about it, but lows. Lows. Low, what, was there a low, low point? or? I was ready for a lot of lows, I think. I definitely was prepared as much as I could and expected that. I was um, given some great advice by Professor Greg White just before I started off. Um, and Because I had the route and I knew the first two days were going to be the hardest with the climbing. Um, and then the third day I was really looking forward to because it was going through my hometown and it was a lot flatter and I knew the route because I rode all the time, yeah. or part of it. Um, but So I thought, oh, that's going to get easier. And he said, don't expect it to get any easier. It won't. And actually that was really, really helpful. Yeah. And I kept that because... You can't, sort of managing your expectations is the same with the negative as it is with the positive. So, you know, if you get into a, into a hole, you've got to have strategies to get out of that hole to manage it. But at the same point, you don't want to get too ahead of yourself or too excited. Like, oh, I'm flying, I'm going to be here in whatever time. Just, it's just, I think it's risky being like that. Yeah. So, I always just thought, no matter how great that moment was, it's going to get hard, yeah. which I think really helped. Yeah. Um, so, I think by being like that, um, I was ready for the hard times. But then a little bit of me perhaps wasn't as hard as I thought it would be. I mean, the weather was really hard. It was, it was yeah, awful. Yeah, you didn't, you didn't pick a prime week. <laughs> no. no but, I suppose it wasn't, wasn't too warm. Makes so an adventure. <laughs> yeah, one silver lining. Yeah, and, and yeah, I struggled particularly on, on day two. I had a bit of an incident and um, just got so, so cold and so wet. And um, my body kind of fought back quite a lot. That was yeah. tough. Um, but I guess as the athlete in me, it's like you've got to get back on that bike. You've just got to keep turning the cranks. Yeah. And that's where I was happiest. I think probably the tough times, yeah, like I said before, were off the bike. You know, I, I could stay on my bike all day and I, I loved it. Um, and then I was glad to stop. But as soon as I stopped, then I start thinking the rain's coming down again on the van and the, the tents, the guys in the tents, it's, I was worried they were going to get blown away. Yeah. And like, we've got to start again tomorrow morning, do it all again. And it's raining, right, pouring, and the wind's howling, and what if we can't get up a shaft because of the weather, and yeah. what if it stops us? And I think when you're not moving forward, that's, that's really That's when you start time. thinking about it. Yeah. Yeah. And then where, where was the most enjoyable point? Was it the finish line, or, is there, or was it knowing you were going to do it? Neither. <laughs> I, I think I really ex I expected, say, the finish to go a certain way. Um, I had that last day, you know, over, over 200 miles, and so a lot of time in my own head. Um, 
I, to be honest, I didn't talk to the outrider or anyone for a lot of that day because it, it was a real emotional day and I was tearing up a lot and just in my own head. But I think I'd sort of think, oh, this is, this is how it's going to finish and this is what I'm going to say at the end and everyone's going to be like, yay, well done, and all that. But partly because it was gone three in the morning, so half the team had gone to sleep, yeah. <laughs> which I don't blame yeah. them at all. <laughs> um, <laughs> partly because when you finish, it's on a gravel hill. A deep gravel hill. So obviously on a handbike, it's impossible to get to the signpost, which you've got to. So Matt kindly went ahead and made me like this ramp out of my yoga mat and uh, a bit of carpet, the best he could, which was awesome. So I took this running kind of fly to get up it, got as far as I could. Um, I was quite delirious, uh, sort of shouted my crutches and I crawled to the the signpost and then collapsed there. (laughs) And then just got really confused because I was quite tired. (laughs) Everyone was very tired. And I kind of was like, is this it? Now what? Yeah, where's the crowd? Yeah, <laughs> and, yeah, there wasn't no one there, but <laughs> I was just really sad to finish. Party goers walking home. <laughs> yeah. 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 There was nobody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not on the seagulls. <laughs> um, and yeah, although I, it was about the record and I wanted to get there as fast as possible, but I was really sad to finish. I didn't want to get off my bike. No. And I always joked before I started that, you know, I'd love to, I, I want to race it, I want to get the world record, but then I'd love to then just take my time coming back and, and, yeah. and just see it all. And I, then I always said that, I'm sure when I get to John O'Groats, I won't be thinking that, but I generally still was. Yeah. I still was. If so I could done a Forest Gump and just turn and gone the other way, yeah. Well, yeah, what, I'd be what out stopped there now. you doing that just logistical? Yeah, the team, they have places to be. You yeah. know, um, everyone, obviously, we had that block, that time to do this, this, yeah. this challenge. Um, they needed to be places they wanted to get off home. So, uh, yeah, sadly, it was kind of right, have a, an hour or two sleep in the car park, back in the vehicles, and, and head south again. Yeah. Um, yeah, still wish I'd have <laughs> stayed on there. But, you know, I can go back and maybe take my time and come back down again. Yeah. Would you? Are you planning to do it again? A, lo- a leisurely one? I'd love to. No, I'll try and get faster next oh, time. Oh, really? <laughs> maybe a bit of both. Yeah, I would love to do it again. Um, the, it, it quickly dawned on me when I finished, you know, because I was just, well, is this it? This isn't, this isn't how I thought it would finish. I don't have this massive sense of achievement. Because I, mm. I just rode my bike from A to B every day. It's just what I do. Um, and I couldn't see out of that bubble that I was in. Um, and, it, and because it was so amazing, the support on the road, you know, everyone in cars tooting and waving and cheering, people with signs on the side of the road, it reminded me of being back at London 2012 in the stadium, you know, that feeling that, yeah. that Great Britain had. It was just amazing. And seeing just me riding my bike was making people happy. Yeah. It was making people want to get involved um, and, and sort of messaging and cheering and sort of saying, oh, I saw you down so-and-so yesterday. Yeah. And it just brought people together, which yeah. is cheesy as it sounds. That's what I, I really think the UK is good it. at that. Yeah. When they yeah. get a cause, we we'll get behind it pretty well. Definitely. We like to be happy, don't we? We like to yeah. smile. We and like if there's a reason to do it. Sometimes. <laughs> but yeah. sometimes. But uh, <laughs> even the, the occasional less happy individuals that we uh, came across, we turned them around eventually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I just, it's, it's true, it is about the journey, it's not about the destination. Yes, it was a race to get there, and that was great, but that was just a bonus. Yeah. It was being out there, being on the road, going through it, you know, riding through the night um, through John O'Groats, and <laughs> at the end, those hills are so steep. And I was actually really glad I did it in the pitch black, because when I saw them you in the daylight, they were so steep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would have been hard. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, yeah, that's what you do in your mountaineer and you go up in the dark. And really? Like, yeah, yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, so good you, trick. Yeah, just kind of feels like you're going for less time yeah. because you can't see your destination. <laughs> so, yeah. and I, I think the hardest probably bit of the journey was the last hill. But I don't think it was because it was the hill. I think like psychologically you just know at the end, don't you? And however far you're going with something, whether you're climbing a mountain or whether whatever it is, whether it's a hundred meter race, that last it's meter. The hardest, like yeah. for a marathon for me, that twenty six point two, it's that point two is the hardest. Yeah. So I think I know it's the last hill. Am I ever gonna get there? Yeah. Of course I was gonna get there. Yeah. <laughs> just preempting that kind of final yeah. final push. So had I known I was turning around and carried on, it'd been fine. <laughs> <laughs> do you do you think you could have, have beat it at all? Or yeah. you could? I mean would you ever consider? I'd like to think I could have done. Um, you know, the, 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 put, the plan was to build this incredible team around me. It was about performance. So yeah. to do it solo on my own, carrying my kit, no. But it wasn't about that. No. It was like, what do I need? What kind of roles do I need? Who do I need on my team to support that side of stuff? So all I need to do so is focus on cycling. No hold bar. Yeah, yeah. And so in that sort of environment, um, yeah, there was obviously, there was, a, you know, times that we lost a bit of time which you, there's a good coach of mine used to say control the controllables you know there's things we couldn't control it's the weather it's um <laughs> it's people walking for the cameras yep. it's, 
<laughs> it's, it's angry white line men painting and not letting you pass because they have a white line to paint for the next 10 miles or something yeah. on a single carriageway and yeah. they're not letting you pass for any amount of smiles or money or anything no. um, and you can't you can't control those but yeah if you, if you kind of it's busy isn't it here <laughs> busy in the ride <laughs> if, if we had better weather you know if, if perhaps thing, if the campsites were closer yeah I definitely could and, and I didn't push as hard as I perhaps you know I had something left at the end so maybe I could push harder who knows who knows, who knows? but I'd love to give it a go another time maybe from top to bottom next time yeah yeah <laughs> So, did you um, have any specific causes you did the ride for or with? You know, any sport? I did. So, obviously, my two charities, blah blah blah, and <laughs> and, uh, and um, with the research work, but also it was just about cycling. It was about Great Britain. It was about getting out and exploring, getting outside, going nice places, doing good things on your bike. It was as simple as that. It was. It made me happy. It was making other people happy, and. That's what it's all about at the end of the day, isn't it? Just getting out on your bike, seeing whatever the land around you, yeah. and um, yeah, just just being happy. Yeah, go nice places, do good things. Exactly. I'll clip plug. <laughs> so, final question. I'm sure everybody asks you this. <laughs> what have you got next in the adventure box? <laughs> What's next? Yeah, the, the amount of people that um, have been asking, but I quite like it. Um, a few people that have obviously done adventures, they say, oh, everyone's going to be asking me what's next, what's next, and it's really annoying. But I quite li- I like that. I think for me yeah. it's kind of good to have another target, and it's almost, it's quite good to cope with the post-adventure you blues as well, is like, well, you're thinking about where you go next. Yeah, and at the end of definitely. any adventure, I'm always thinking, where am I going next? Yeah, yeah. Um, I forgot what I said. <laughs> You said you were going to cycle the moon, didn't you? <laughs> the moon. Yeah. Is that possible? First hand cycle around the moon. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Um, yeah, so so with what's next, this is obviously about performance. It was about smashing, breaking, hopefully, the world record. And thankfully, I did. Yeah. Uh, six days, 22 hours and 18 minutes. <laughs> um, but at heart, I'm definitely, you know, I love that solo adventure, just me going out and it's just about you and, and what, what you've got to do to get through to these these adventures and that kind of thing yeah. um, and I love that side and, and so it's definitely a kind of um, not a battle but you know I wanted there's a mix there's a lot of me that wants to do these solo proper you know bikepacking adventures carry all your kit just live very basically yeah. um, but then I'm an athlete and it's all about performance it is about records and fastest first and all the rest of it um, so it's finding that, that balance and I think Great Britain is great um, but it just wasn't big enough I just wanted to keep cycling. Yeah. So I think whatever whatever's next, there's going to be you know a few things definitely in, in the pipeline already. Um, but something just a bit more maybe land a bit mass. longer. Yeah. yeah. A bit more land. Uh, yeah. Very exciting. So massive thank you for coming in. It's great you to very have much. you. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, hope the recovery goes well. And hope you it'd be great to hear about your next next plan in Indeed more detail. You will. <laughs> yeah. And um, if you want to know more about Mel, you can check her out on our website. Some really good stories about our adventures. And um, yeah, thanks very much, guys. Thank you.